Hello and welcome Aries. This is your July tarot reading coming from the mountains of Java. I sincerely hope that you find it useful and get something from it. Aries, something of a mixed bag of a spread I'd say. It's going to be an interesting reading, that's for sure, but I'm not too certain what to make of it just yet. If you look at that middle card, the Ace of Wands, uh, that's the energy that runs throughout the whole of the reading. And that's about something new. new. It could be new action, it could be ideas, but something new. A new activity, maybe a new, a new way in your life. Look down to the bottom right and you couldn't have a better card. That's the recent past. It's the Ten of Cups. Many blessings and joys. Your current energy is the Emperor card. You sitting in your power. You in control of things. Uh, so, so far, a nice reading. But then we get to the Six of, one, uh, six of Swords. Not a bad reading, but this is you moving on. This is you moving on. So, given that you were in bliss, why are you moving on? And not only is it moving on, it's about you dumping baggage. Ooh. Given that the ten is happy families, I wonder if there's a family breakdown here. It's possible. It's possible. I need to keep my mind open, but it's possible. Because you see the next card, which is the card that impacts on the outcome, is the Queen of Pentacles. And I often call her the single mother card. Now, she doesn't have to be female, or you don't have to be female, nor do you have to have children. It's the energy, if you like, of a single mother. But of course, that does fit in with the, with the, with the um, broken family sort of analogy, doesn't it? And the card that would change the outcome is the tower. So that's a complete change, a complete breakup. Your whole life changing. Mm. So if we are talking of a family breakup, this might be you completely moving away from it. Uh, because the outcome, well, you know, the outcome could be about a divorce settlement or, or even just you know, dividing up the assets because it's the Five of Swords and it's the card of winning at all costs. Now, I don't know if that's you or the person you're fighting with, but gosh, yes. That, whew, that would explain everything. I need to keep an open mind. I need to keep an open mind. So we're going to look at each card individually. Um, but I really hope, as I say, that you find this useful. And if you do, if you could subscribe, like, hit the bell, make a comment, it really does help me. Thank you so much. You may well be asking, why from Java? What's important about tarot from Java? And the truth is, there is nothing so important about tarot from Java simply that here in Java we have many different spirits who will come to help in, in your tarot reading. It'll probably put a different reflection on things. For example, the spirits here are less likely to be concerned about love and finances, despite people in Java being every bit as interested in these things as the rest of us. But maybe the spirits are trying to tell us something else. Now I'll be using probably two decks but out of three decks. So the first deck is Tarot Nusant Tara. The second deck is the Steampunk deck and the third deck is the Light Visions Tarot. Um, Tarot Nusant Tara is actually a new one to me which, which I love. Whereas the light visions um, I've struggled with as a result of the rendering. Um, 
although I, I think I'll grow into it, I, I will keep using it and coming back to it. You can see on all of them, I'm using quite a lot of uh, salt, and that's to clear the energy and the spirits from them. Something that I do fairly regularly with my tarot. And I also, you'll see a number of gym at there that I use, um, just to bring a good energy to the tarot um, and to my reading. Perhaps the most important mystical object we use in Java is the Chris, the curly knife that you can see that I've placed across both decks. Chris are very important for bringing the spirits to work on any object here in Java. And I call on the spirits of the mountain to assist me in shuffling the cards, in selecting the right cards and interpret them correctly for Aries for July 2020. Now the card that impacts on all the other cards and runs through the reading is the Ace of Wands. This is sort of like new beginnings, inspiration could be new wealth, and certainly a complete change of things. So it's it's a card, I would say, of great hope. I mean, it really is a card of great hope. And, and I need to be mindful of that as I interpret all the other cards. Uh, you look at it, you know, they're holding up the, the wand or the club there. And behind the hand is that cloud as though there's something divine about it, like it's meant to be. So like whatever's going to happen in and around the month of July is divine and it's for your own best. I mean, most things ultimately are, but you know, um, it's a very strong message on that. And... If you look at the landscape, it looks somewhat parched, but it does sort of somewhat, I think, signify a new journey ahead for you. Something new. That's my feeling about it, yeah. Now, the card of your recent past is a lovely card. It's the Ten of Cups, and it suggests you've got many blessings. I mean, particularly in terms of probably love and families. I, it, it could also be money. I mean, it's sort of multiple blessings card. It really is. You look at it. I mean, it's beautiful. You see the cups over their head, which are the blessings. Blessings, certainly, of love. Uh, the family is there, all dressed very beautifully. The husband has his arm around the wife in a very loving way. The children, a boy and a girl, are playing happily together. They look to have a lovely secure home just up on that hill. So it looks wonderful. It looks wonderful. Yeah, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Uh, now your current energy is that of the Emperor. I mean, strong, insightful, powerful. A leader, somebody that people look up to, you know, what's wrong with that? Brilliant. In control of your emotions. Yeah, knowing, yeah, no, you know, almost knowing what other people think as well as yourself. Yeah. Look at him sitting in, sitting on his throne. I mean, he looks powerful. He's got that staff of authority there. Authority, yeah, that's very important. Authority over others. So, I mean, it's a lovely card, isn't it? You know, we've had that many blessings, families, and now we have this card of authority. I'm sure it is you. I don't think it's talking about somebody of authority coming into your life. I'm sure this is you. Hmm. Now your future energy is where I begin to have some misgivings about this reading because your future energy is the Six of Swords. I mean this is you moving on but given that everything seems so perfect 
Why are you moving on? And of course, the theme running through it all is the Ace of Wands. Now, I think it's in your best interest to move on. I think it's a good thing to be moving on. But nevertheless, given that things seem so perfect, it's got to be... It's got to be painful, I would have thought. And indeed, this card is about you dumping baggage. So, there is something that you need to let go of. Now, this is, this is the future. This is the future. Something you need to let go of. You look at the card. Well, yeah, they're moving from one side of the lake to the other. You can't really see the baggage they've got to dump. But they're going to dump the baggage in the middle of that lake. That's what it's all about. So you're being urged here. Well, you're being told it's going to happen anyway. But you're going to move on and you're going to dump the baggage. Mm. And now the energy impacting on the outcome is the Queen of Pentacles. Now, I have to tell you that this isn't necessarily chronologically later than the last card, but it seems to fit in with the last card very well. In fact, it seems to be round about the same timing, if you want to think in terms of time. Not that that means anything, but you know. Um, no, this is what impacts on the outcome. And she's a very lovable queen. But you look at her, she's tired out. And why is she tired out? Well, she's trying to do too many things. Now, I call her the single mother card, which, you know, if you are moving on from a relationship, that sort of energy, I mean, you don't have to be children. You don't have to be female. But it's, it's this trying to do so many things, got so much on your plate and you're tired out. I always say with this, this queen, that she probably thinks she's doing a very bad job of everything. Whereas all those around her probably think that she's doing a good job of everything. But yeah, she's tired, isn't she? Look at her, she's tired. She can't, she feels she can't cope with all that's on her plate. Yeah. If that Queen of Pentacles leads to the outcome, this card changes the outcome. And I think I think we have to say, given what card it is, it actually changes. I know we say changes or makes it less extreme, but I, I think it completely changes it. Because this card is the Tower card. Now this card is is everything in your world coming tumbling down. Now, yet again, I have to say that, that even though it will be painful, I think it's, a, it's actually a good thing. It's actually a good thing. It's, if you like, remember the, the Six of Swords, the dumping of baggage. This is the sort of catharsis of everything changing. But now you start afresh, which is, of course, the Ace of Wands, the, the thing that runs through it all. You look at it, I mean, it looks pretty bleak. You know, the tower's been struck by lightning, they're falling out of the tower. All they can do is brush themselves off and start again, isn't it? Yeah. And now you see the outcome is the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is the card of winning at all costs. Now, I don't know if this is you or this is somebody else, but certainly you're suffering from it. You look at the card. He's won the battle, hasn't he? And he's picking up everybody else's swords. But they're walking off saying, well, if you're going to be like that, we're not going to play with you anymore. You know, because nobody wins in these situations, even though you, you or whoever it is, thinks they've won everything. They've actually lost everything as well. Because they've lost the respect of the people that were around them. Do you know, you look at the world today, you know, and, and, and those, the, the super rich, they've gone too far, haven't they? They've gone too far. 
you know, we no longer, we are no longer happy to have them lording over us. I mean, I mean, recently it was it was the FA Cup final between Liverpool and Chelsea, and uh, Prince William, I think it is. I'm sorry if I've got the name wrong. I'm, I'm not a royalist at all. Yeah, from Manchester, for God's sake. <laughs> We're all Republicans. Um, but you know, the Liverpool fans booed Prince William. And, you know, after what his uncle has done, nobody has the stomach, nobody has the stomach to keep those parasites lording over us, you know? And, and of course, you know, the, the media, but they don't trust the media at all these days. They were saying how disrespectful they are. Disrespect! Disrespect! My God, just think what his uncle did. Anyway, anyway, it's that sort of thing, you know what I mean? You, yeah, yeah, you know, the royals are still there, they're still lording over us, but everybody hates them. You know, and it's that sort of a thing, it really is. Right, let's just get a bit of clarity. <laughs> and I'm going to get a clarity on the Five of Swords after my tirade against the British royal family, you know. <laughs> Let's see that I'm sort of half right on this at least. And the first card we get is the High Priestess. Very interesting. Control of both logic and emotions. Hmm, that's interesting. The next card is the Eight of Cups. This is you disillusioned and walking away. And the final card is the Seven of Wands. Scoring some victories, but also creating enemies. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's look at each individually. So, yeah, the first card, the High Priestess. Somebody in control of their emotions. Somebody who understands the conscious and the subconscious. Somebody who understands the mystical and the logical. Somebody of great power, really, isn't it? Now, remember, this is a card about conflict. I wonder, I wonder if this is about using sort of psychology to defeat whoever it is. Yeah, to defeat whoever it is that, that you're in opposition to. That's how it feels like. I mean, look, look, I understand the feeling that, that you, you've been hard done by. Because I'm, I'm sure this is a divorce or a separation. I understand it, and I understand the feeling of retribution. But, but let me, I mean, I've been a, a victim of black magic for over ten years. But let me tell you, it gets you absolutely nowhere. It's the last feeling you should have. No. No, you need, really need to seek compromise. You look at her, two towers there, you know, one dark silver, one light silver, hand on the crystal ball, tarot cards in hand, yeah, she knows something that the other doesn't, but she's using it to her advantage, isn't she? And the next card of clarification is the Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups fits very well with it, with the... Six of um, six of swords. Eight of cups is walking away from something, disillusioned and walking away. So it didn't half feeling like a divorce. This isn't it? Yes, it's feeling like a divorce, and this is you turning your back on them. But as I say, you've got that winning at costs mentality. It is you. It is you. And you, you didn't dump the baggage, did you? You see, you didn't dump the baggage. You should have completely walked away. You should have had this tower moment whereby your life changes completely. Maybe even moving to a different country, moving to a different state, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you should have done. You, sh you should have completely walked away. And you haven't. You've tried to win at all costs. 
Yeah, well, you look at the guard turning her back on it, walking away, yeah. Of course, you're walking away from that happy family, those blessings, maybe that's where the difficulty lies. And you see, now we have the seven of wands. The seven of wands, yeah. You're winning the battles, you're winning the battles. You know, so the, the you know this is confirming the five of swords. So you're winning the battles because you've gone out to win at all costs. But you've upset people. You've upset people in the way that you've been so brutal over it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe you want to. You know, if it's divorce, maybe you want to upset your former partner. But you've probably lost all your old mutual friends as well in doing so. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't have gone for retribution. That's that's what we're being told. You shouldn't have gone for ret. You look at her. She's she's standing up on that pedestal, but everyone can see that. Yeah, she's been a bit too brutal with things, hasn't she? Okay, we can summarise for you, Aries. Aries, I don't think this is a happy reading. I've got to be honest. Oh, happy spread. You did have happiness in the past. It, it seemed like happy families. It seemed like you were blessed with many, many things. And indeed, even now, you're very much in control. You're very much respected and looked up to an authority figure. But I think you use that authority a little bit too much. And I'm pretty certain that there is a family breakup here. Maybe even a divorce, but certainly a splitting of assets. And what you need to do is completely move on, not seek retribution. You know, I mean, I know, it, it, you know, if you, if, well, male or female, maybe you contributed the most in terms of assets towards this relationship and you feel that you should get the most back. But you just have to walk away, really. You just have to start a new life and... There's a degree of reluctance to do that because you do want retribution. You might even have been left, you know, carrying the can. So, you know, if, if there was a family, you might have been left bringing up the children. And you're finding it a bit of a struggle now. And you need to move on, but you, you can't. You're not dumping the baggage that you need to dump. You're really not. And I, I, I think there is a divorce here. If it's not a divorce, it's a splitting of assets. And you're looking to win at all costs. And you're doing this by using both psychology and, you know, the logical. To, 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 beat, to beat your former partner into a pulp. And, you know, as a result, I think you lose all your mutual friends. You're doing exactly the wrong thing. You shouldn't aim for retribution. You, you really shouldn't. Yeah, you know, you might win the bulk of the assets. Well, you, you'll probably still not win, win as much as... You'll, you'll probably never be happy. Because what you need to do is move on and start a new life. That's what you really need to do. And, yeah, it, it, it's possible that that the universe will intervene and pull the rug from under your feet and you just have to start a new life. That is possible. And to be honest, that would be a good thing, even though it won't feel like it at the time. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed Tarot from Java as an addition to my channel, The Magic of Java. Please take a look at the other... The other uh, videos that I have on this channel about magic from Java and I hope that you will be become a subscriber. Now if you want to find hear your next tarot reading hit the button and that will inform you of when I publish new um, new readings. I'm certainly going to do a reading for every month but maybe I will try them a bit more frequently, say a mid-month reading, and maybe also some special readings. But above all, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. And enjoy Java. <laughs>